It's time for another tactic. Today, I'm going to share with you a system that I love playing. It's the box and it's capable of some fantastic goals. If you have any tactics out there that you're inspired with, let me know in the comments below. Maybe we can do another one of these tactical shows very, very soon. Yes, the box. What makes the box system interesting is the way it's set up. You've got four attacking players in the opposition third. Two of them are normally going to be sitting on top of the defenders and another two are going to be very close to central midfielders. This makes it pretty challenging to work the ball out from defense towards the central midfielders. The goalkeeper is usually going to be forced into using the fullbacks. When they use the fullbacks, this is the only lane that is going to be open to them. The goal here is for the defending team that's playing the box, apply pressure on the fullbacks when they get the ball, force them to go back inside again. This means that as the fullback receives the ball, his passing lanes are going to get blocked, we want to make sure that his only avenue is towards the middle. And to do that, we have to apply hard tackling and tight marking on central midfielders so that if the ball moves towards the center of the pitch, our overwhelming numbers in the center can force a turnover. Now, if you've been following my Palermo Diaries, you also know that occasionally I like to change my tactics. And uh, I was using a 4-1-3-2-4-3-1-2 combination to get ourselves promoted. Now, Again, this season, we have a situation where I might be forced into a variation of the tactic. So I'm thinking, well, this would be a perfect time for us to play the box. Now, we've set a certain box tactic up with them and we're going to be using a back four like this uh, with two defensive midfielders and two players, uh, four players in the attacking third. But this is where things are going to get interesting when we want to set up our tactic. Of course, this isn't the only way you can set the tactic up. It's important to understand the roles themselves so we can understand the kind of transitions we are after. Now, Palermo plays one version of the box. I've also got Aston Villa playing a different version of the box. All right, it's time for us to talk about some of the roles and duties in this tactic for the version that I'm releasing. Of course, there are multiple versions of this tactic. Let me just let me just explain some of the roles and duties here. Now, you can play this with a register or you can play with a DLP or a roaming playmaker. Why register? Why did I go with a register? Because you don't need somebody who's going to have to bust the gut to get up the pitch. Roaming playmaker, you do. Deep line playmaker is a holding position role. The only role that holds this position is the deep line playmaker. Register is a bit less aggressive or I won't say aggressive, a bit, you don't need acceleration for a, register whereas you want you need like a lot of stamina as well for a roaming playmaker so we've got register register is a fantastic role because he's going to try and uh, release balls from deeper areas we've got volante who's going to bomb up down the pitch then the final third the configuration well here we've got many configurations we've got f9 advance forward ap and attack shadow striker why Move into channels, move into channels, move into channels. AP, we've given him a PI for moving into channels. The rest of the roles, well, they're basically bulk basic, right? So this is what we're going to do with this setup. Now, there are other setups that we can do this with. Now, uh, the reason why we want to move into channels is because they're going to drift out wide in between the spaces between players. Now, that creates mayhem. The F9 will drop deep. He's going to try and release the ball to any one of the players who's attacking the space, which is actually quite exhilarating to watch. FM19... I played it with a target for and support. And I had this as an AMA. Still work. Except FM22 AP is now very, very good. So you want to think about how you can use an AP. So here we've got, there's one version that can use the target forward. It still works. But then all you have to do is tell this guy, edit his instructions and tell him to aim for the target forward as well. Then you've got one guy hurling the ball towards the target forward. You can also play this with an F9, F9, Shadow Striker, Shadow Striker combination. Now here, what I would recommend is 
going to go go out there and get yourself a tall shadow striker. Then you can hurl balls from the <laughs> over the top of your defense. Towards a player here who's tall, dark, and handsome, wins the ball and then lays it off for guys who want to score goals. Once again, F9 taking more risks. F9 taking more risks. Shadow strikers moving to channel, so occasionally they drift this way. Right? They drift this way. This guy drops deep. If he goes towards the right, he drops deep. Then the you know he might win the header, then the shadow striker might come in to score goals unmarked. So you've got several options. However, we are releasing this tactic with us with an advance forward on attack, AP on attack, with move into channel. So this is the version as I'll, I'll be releasing. Out of possession instructions is pretty straightforward. We don't use pre shot goal copy distribution because we want to maintain the box. Otherwise, we don't we lose the pressure on the central midfield. You can play on a much higher line engagement standard defensive line and trigger press is set this way. Now, there are going to be occasions where you might want to be a bit more aggressive. If you can do it with, you have the defenders, you can actually do this. Play a very aggressive game in the final third. And you can pull it off if you have the players for it. I sometimes do this when I have decent players. Now, as far as the in-transition instructions are concerned, we're only going with counter, um, you know, rolling it out to the back line. The reason why you don't do counter press is very simple. When you counter press these two, the double pivot moves out of position. When the double pivot moves out of position and you don't win, you don't do something good with the ball, you lose possession, then you're opening yourself up to a potential disaster in defense. So I would just uncheck this and play it this way. Finally, we've got the final third instructions. The final third instructions, fairly narrow, standard tempo, run at defense, play out of defense. That's it. Nothing too overcomplicated. Of course, some people might think of focus play, focus play. So whenever he comes up, then these two guys might drift to the side to give you uh, give him support. Now, as far as the focus play uh, instructions go, I really leave that up to you because I typically just use focus play to the middle because I want more congestion in the center. Yes, I'm evil. Okay, I just want to create a me uh, um, like experience in the center, but you know. Once again, it's entirely up to you. The tactic goes out with focus play in the middle, standard passing directness, higher tempo, and narrow attacking width. There are going to be times when you might have a problem down the flanks. So this is why it's very important to think about who's playing down the flanks as your fullbacks. Because your fullbacks have to keep the ball. They have to be able to move the ball. They have to be able to intercept. Which is why sometimes I actually play with defenders as fullbacks. Because I don't expect the fullbacks to cross the ball. In fact, I never expect the fullbacks to cross the ball. I just expect the fullbacks to move with the ball. Be a passing option. Because I've got a Regista and I've got a Volante. In front, I've got an AP. That's why I set the tactic up this way. I don't need fullbacks bombing down the flanks. Naturally, if I had fullbacks bombing down the flanks, I'd be very happy. Because then I just have those guys drilling crosses all day long. But if you don't have strong fullbacks and you're running the risk of seeing those diagonals opening up your defense, then consider the use of players with good jumping reach as fullbacks. And this means retraining defensive midfielders or even central defenders. Box systems can be a lot of fun to play with. And I want to thank Simji because he was the one in 2016 who asked me the initial question about how to set up a box tactic. And it was because of him that I started to look at replicating Brazil's box tactic and then the love affair with the box tactic occurred and I've been making these box systems now for four FMs in a row and I love it. Now some of you might think these are you know a bit gimmicky because it's a ball over some of them are ball over the tops. But hey man, football manager, you wanna win games? Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show and you found it useful. If you have any questions, you guys know where to find me. Once again, I want to thank you for all your support. You guys keep this channel going. Stay safe, take care of each other. I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.